Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast and let me go ahead and check something real quickly. All right, my audio is definitely recording here and here we go. Here is the game. This is going to be a 2v2 matchup and before the game gets any further, let's go ahead and view everyone's. Um, yes, no crazy shortcut keys. Um, the viewer and replay casting a little bit more difficult from Warcraft 3 than say Starcraft 2, but then again... That's a challenge I am willing to live up to. We have a wind and bull spawning as the human and orc combination. Meanwhile, we have Sam, Don, and Prado spawning as the human and orc combination as well. All right, I am going to turn on ally colors just so that it is a little bit easier to figure out who is attacking who and who is winning out in these battles. And a human orc, human orc combination should be a really, really interesting game. Archmage most likely will be coming out from Samdan. Yes, we do see an Archmage now. Meanwhile, we see that Wind did not speed build his Altar of Kings. Meaning that Wind is not going to have that Archmage out as early and perhaps not going to be able to creep out nearly as quickly. Alright, so apparently they are part of Clan Vicky from US West. Um, yeah, shout out to, I guess, US West. If you guys haven't followed me on Twitter, I am Crota underscore US West. And um, I don't think I really plug in my Twitter all too much. I um, I do do also some StarCraft 2 tweets as well. So we'll see what's going to happen here as the peons are going to be passing each other in midday. Or I guess, I guess that would be about 5 o'clock in the afternoon or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Can't quite tell the time. All right. So strategies, 2v2 strategies, always very interesting to see. And a lot of 2v2 games come down to just synergy team and teamwork, being able to engage as one giant unit. Samdan already making a move out with his Archmage and Footman. It looks like there is going to be a lot of Mud Golems. Mud Golems, however, no problem for Militia when you can outnumber them as much as you see here. All right, Militia going up and going to be taking down many of these Mud Golems already. Archmage should get to level 2 relatively quickly as a Peon now backing away. Archmage now dropping a second Water Elemental. Not quite sure if it's really necessary. The DPS should have been enough. And uh, we are, oh, going to be just shy. So apparently a 3-3-2-2-2 three, three, two, two, two creep camp does, um, is just a little bit less experience or a little bit more experience than a 5-3-3 three, three creep camp. All right, Archmage now taking a critical or wind walk strike from the Blade Master. And now here we have them going at it. Grunt doing some great pathing against um, Archmage. So the Archmage actually running into a little bit of problems. They're taking in a little bit more damage. Every point of damage, every swing of the sword does matter in Warcraft 3. As the units are now backing away here. Once again, both sides battling up. Archmage now battling here. You can see that it is going to be... Oh, wait. I need to hit this one more time. There we go. Um, yellow, yellow versus pink and pink. And now the Blade Master looking to come in as well. Prado quickly selling his Scroll Town Portal. Going to be picking up a... Uh, healing self and some early pressure coming in from the U.S. West clan. All right, Wind looking to back away. Does U.S. West, does, do they stand a chance against Sam, Don, and Prado here? All right, units are running into the backfield trying to make sure that they are able to heal back up once more. More battling back over here as the Blade Master going after some footmen. Water Mental now being dropped by Wind. Archmage is also, both of them, oh sorry, only Wind's Archmage is sitting at level 2. As we still see one Archmage sitting at level 1. And Samdan may be in a little bit of problems because he cannot summon a, a, that many Water Mentals. Now summoning another Water Mental finally. But stopping to do so and taking a lot of damage in that engagement. Alright, Footman down to 76 hit points will be running away. Archmage now running off to the top. And how much damage? Oh, there is a healing sound, but a fireball will quickly stop that. There it goes. A second fireball coming in as well. Blade Master unable to catch up as the Archmage down to 126 hit points. Where is it going to be going as another fireball hits once more? Archmage now looking to just back off here. It looks like this Archmage will just perhaps be trying to sacrifice himself or perhaps trying to buy a Staff of Teleportation. And it is not going to work out. Archmage now hiding in the back here. There's a Staff of Teleportation. What is he doing? Bull! Oh my goodness, Bull letting that Archmage escape. That was a horrible, horrible mistake by Bull. And what is uh, what is Wind going to do now? All right, Prado now trying to come in. Blade Master does get a, uh, or no, no, does not have the healing salve. I believe it did take a little bit of damage here. 
Footman and Grunts both battling out the creeps. Um, I guess they are setting aside their differences temporarily as the Archmage does pick up a, a, a replenishment potion. Arch or Blade Master still looking around. Where is that Archmage? Where did it go? The Archmage is back over here. Did get a rejuvenation that scroll or that potion of replenishment or replenishment potion did come in fact very very handy um, earlier as the Archmage now pretty much getting back up to full and now we are going to see perhaps a tower push. Masonry upgrade is being upgraded as well. Wind has plenty of um, a plenty of peons as we now see an attack down over here. All right, Bull gonna have to engage one low hit point grunt. Where is it gonna go? Trying to run away. Blade Master now looking to engage as well. The Orc Burrows not going to be able to cover the shop. And that is going to be a bit of a problem. We are going to be going into a Fire Lord from Bull though. So Bull should be able to put this back. No. Wind and Bull both going into Fire Lords. Alright. So a Lava Spawns could spell problems here. The Blade Master does have a Squirrel Town Portal. He did not sell it. And the Lava Spawns. May be able to start splitting a second Lava Spawn coming in as well. Speed Swirl now coming in. Fire Lord is in trouble. Where is it going to go? It is probably going to die. Down it goes. Lava Spawns are already... Uh, look like they're uh, primed to split already. As we now see a Wind Walk Strike. There's a Dust of Appearance. And what is happening next? A new shop now trying to be established. Militia being called over but not able to push this back. As a peon will need to rebuild that um, that Voodoo Lounge. Alright, Grunts. Low hit point Grunts. Both sides still battling them out. And it looks as though Samdan will um, at least lose one footman here. And perhaps another Water Elemental. Water Elemental could give some nice experience once more. As the Lava Spawns are starting to split. They need to figure out where they can attack in order to continue that split. Level 1 did fall down. Meanwhile, Archmage and Blood Mage combination siphon mana in order to, I guess, siphon the mana from the Fire Lords. Fire Lords generally need a lot of mana if you can neutralize them. That is very, very effective as the Fire Lord. Oh, a Tome of Experience now being left behind. Who's going to read up? The Shadow Hunter reading up. Even though it is an agility hero, apparently agility heroes still like to read. Now, Fire Lord and Blade Master are now coming across. This is going to be a weird engagement here as we now see units coming across the center. Militia coming in as well. Archmage, Fire Lord does have a Clarity Potion and Brilliance Aura. Is it going to be enough? Double Fire Lords with Brilliance Aura. This could be a brilliant strategy indeed. If they can actually get out the necessary damage, there is a whole bunch of Scout Towers now. Wow, a, a massive, massive tower rush here. Militia are in position, and what is going to happen? This is not going to be very good at all. Um, people are wondering where Yumiko is. I, I guess Yumiko should be the normal partner here, but instead Prado playing alongside, and that may be a problem for Prado, as Prado now overcommits into a fight. Lava Spawn now trying to back away. Footman and now engaging back over here. One Lava Spawn is going to get taken down. A new Lava Spawn may be able to split off once more if it can. That is going to be a lot of problems. There's plenty of targets to hit. More Siphon Mana. Fire Lord now low on mana. Unable to do anything there as another Water Elemental is getting dropped. Alright, another Siphon Mana coming in. Brilliant, brilliant job shutting down all of these heroes. As that Blood Mage, now a healing wave coming in. And the Shadow Hunter, if it has unlimited mana, may spell problems. But no, the Guard Towers are now up. Guard Towers are up, shooting back at all of these units here. You can see more healing wave coming in. And who is going to come out on top? Remember, Guard Towers do not give experience if they kill something. And that is going to be a problem here as the units... Oh, another healing wave coming back in. Wow, so many close calls. Oh, that Fire Lord down to 268 or down to 16 hit points for a second. As both sides are still fighting it up. Low hit point grunts and footmen need to hide next to these towers of Fire Lord. Now backing away, Blade Master may come in for some easy quick kills on some units as another Water Elemental may get taken down here. Peon gonna get taken down. Blade Master going after some lower hit point units and now the um, Blade Master unable to engage here. What's gonna be happening? More Siphon Mana and this Blood Mage is gonna be the hero if they can somehow... Or, or the MVP hero, or MVH, I guess. 
if they can actually shut down all four of the intelligence heroes. Both sides still fighting up. All right, Fire Lord down to 41 hit points. It is dead. A new Siphon Mana coming in. And the Archmage sitting at level 3. Another healing wave coming back in. Blade Master, uh, uh, down goes the second Fire Lord. Two Fire Lords do, do get taken down. And now there is a Hex. That is going to be a problem. As the Blade Master does win, walk away. Just in, no, does not win, walk away in time. And wow. Level, um, that Archmage sitting with level 2 Water Elementals isn't going to be enough. Needs to get some healing scrolls in here to really do anything at all. And now, oh, a Flame Strike now coming in. And this is going to be a huge, huge turnaround. If the Blood Mage is able to handle all of this, there is another Hex on Wind. And Wind now trying to run away. Is it going to be able to buy another Potion? Peasants now trying to repair. We could get another Flame Strike here in just a moment. More Siphon Mana. There's the second Flame Strike coming in and causing a lot of problems for those Peasants. Those Peasants cannot um, stay on this burning ground. Another Peasant taken down, giving, I believe, level 3 on that Shadow Hunter. Blade Master very low. A Healing Wave coming back in once more. And all Win can do is hope to fend this, or all Win can do is hope that there's enough towers that there's not much that Prado can do. Prado now starting to lose some of the buildings. Fire Lords now making their way over. And now Mortar Teams coming in from Samdan. Samdan, oh my gosh, a massive priest army. Really no way to deal with this mass dispel. Yes, all of Samdan's priests are at Adept, so they can dispel any water elemental in a matter of seconds e even dispelling those fire lords all right here we go there is another hex win now trying to run away this strategy would pretty much break down most normal teams as the blood mage siphoning mana from spirit walkers to shut them down as well motor team's gonna t finish this off and now all the peasants trying to run away oh a cancellation on that flame strike as we are now gonna get another siphon mana from a second spirit walker fire lord unable to really do anything and really, if somehow Samdan is able to win this game with Prado, the most valuable hero will be that Blood Mage. I have never seen one Blood Mage shut down so many heroes. And yeah, pretty much Samdan is... Um, I am not going to repeat that, but yeah, this is uh, such a great, great game here. All right. Archmage looking to come back in. More Siphon Mana, more Dispel Magic, and more Dispel Magic coming in. Dispelling and causing damage across the board. Mortar teams, all the towers, or half the towers are now pretty much gone. Blade Master now trying to come in. There's the healing wave. And any momentum that FS had has now pretty much been neutralized by Samdan and his army. No expansions for Samdan either. He's pretty much just attacking with Caster Mortar and this Blood Mage. Alright, it looks like those raiders will get taken down. Um, it really doesn't feel like Prado is doing all too much to help out. And now more Siphon Mana shutting down more heroes here. And that Blood Mage is doing such a great, great job. And now more Tower is going to get taken down. There it goes. And I believe the counter push will be coming in shortly. Otherwise, the GG will, could be coming in faster than that. All the towers destroyed. All the shops destroyed. Um, one Demolisher coming back in from the other side as well. And Samdan showing how great and how strong he is. Let's take a look at Bull. Bull is at Stronghold. Wind is at Keep. And hence the Tier 2 or the two heroes. The problem, no additional buildings. Now finally building an Arcane Sanctum. And Samdan with a Blood Mage. Making an amazing comeback. Yes, observers not noticing the same thing as well. Archmage of Samdan perhaps out for blood. Knows like, you know what? You are not going to tower me. I'm human and I didn't even bother to tower you. How dare you tower me? As we could be seeing an engagement here. All right, there is a quick hex. Raider going to be taking a lot of damage there. Mortar team's going to finish off that voodoo lounge in a matter of seconds. Poor Raider. And now what is happening here? Blade Master looking to um, pick up some items and now Wind walk away so far. And now we also see Wind trying to actually level up his heroes. Level 1 on the Fire Lord versus a level 3 Blood Mage. That is never a good combination. And Samdan just chose the correct counter hero. All right, in comes the push now. How many mortar teams do we have? It looks like two. Yeah, no, three mortar teams, four mortar teams. 
Yeah, four mortar teams just launching away now. What is Bull going to do? Bull now trying to do a bit of a base trade. Raiders, do they have actually have a pillage? No, they do not. So no pillage as this one building does get taken down. It looks like we are trying to establish an expansion here by Wind. Um, good call there if they can establish that. Archmage Nils trying to creep up. Ring of Regeneration on that Fire Lord. Not that great of an item as the Raiders pretty much unable to take down this stronghold. If Pillage was researched, this could be a completely different game as they would still be able to harvest some sort of gold. Back home, uh, what, a Raider going up against a Water Elemental? Not worth it as we're now going to see an engagement here. Mortar teams and Mass Casters shutting down that double Fire Lord strategy. And all I can say is what is Wind and Bull going to do in Game 2? They cannot utilize that same build. They know that it's not going to work. And they got to come up with something now. Samdan now retreating back home. Oh, catching some of the units. Archmage. And there is the GG. So game one. Game one goes to Samdan um, and Prado. I pretty I could easily just say that game one goes to Samdan pretty much. He took the game and was able to absolutely control the entire pace and tempo. Building the proper counter units and really supporting his opponent or his partner thanks for watching thanks for listening stay tuned for game two